You're listening to the Teen Day Sports Special Program Show from the Fort Atkinson High School. We're with Coach Gorelli from the Milton High School Boys Basketball Varsity Team. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks. How about yourself? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for asking. So, um, to start it off, how do you feel your season's going so far? Um, it's going uh, uh, pretty well to start. We're three and two, so uh, we're uh, we're playing some pretty good basketball. It's still early in the year, uh, mm-hmm. so we're still making some progress. But overall, I'm I'm pretty excited with how the boys are playing. Um, ha- like. Would you consider tonight to be a big game? Yeah, I, I think absolutely. You know, it's our first conference game of the season, so you always want that to go well and see how the boys respond. And um, So, yeah, I, w- I would say tonight's an important game for us. So how do you pump them up for a big game like this? Uh, you know, we, we try the motivational speeches. We have the music in the locker room, try different techniques and stuff like that. The boys are pretty good about uh, getting enthusiastic on their own, though. Do you have any like quirky traditions, like a chant you say before the game? Uh, yeah, the boys have some different uh, warm-up stuff that they'll go through uh, that the people will be able to see before the game during introductions and stuff like that. Um, in tonight's game, would you rather have a high-scoring offense or an unstoppable defense? Uh, for tonight, I think uh, defense is going to be the biggest priority for us. You know, Fort Atkinson's a very good basketball team that uh, can score a lot of points, so I think uh, more than anything, we need to play pretty good defense tonight. Yeah, but at the same time, you need points to win. Absolutely, absolutely. So I think it's important to have a balance, balance of the two. Uh, what made you want to become a basketball coach? Uh, you know, I grew up playing basketball. I had a lot of uh, very influential people in my life throughout basketball that were coaches. Uh, my dad started me and, and coached me all the way um, through youth sports, and so I just, through the love of the game and wanting to be able to work with kids, uh, thought there would be a pretty good profession for myself. You said you played basketball. What yep. position did you play? Uh, I was a point guard in high school. And can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. I uh, All the way through high school, um, kind of switched off between shooting guard and point guard. And then uh, by the time I reached varsity my last couple years in high school, uh, I played preliminary point guard and uh, was captain of our team. And I actually played at Milton, too, so it's kind of special that I'm able to coach here as well. Um, so... For varsity, you have to try out, correct? Yes, correct. What are the standards you set for making the team? Well, first of all, you have to be a, a good basketball player. Of course. Obviously, <laughs> we, we, uh, we uh, evaluate on skill, but we also want good kids in our program, kids that are going to be dedicated and mm-hmm. take care of their schoolwork um, and behave off the court as well. What advice would you give to aspiring coaches? Um, learn about, as much about the game as you possibly can. You know, Watch a lot of basketball. Ask questions of other coaches because um, they're really – the best source of knowledge because they've been there before and uh, just be around the game as much as you can. So a real like person that has to be into basketball. Yeah, yeah, I would obviously say you'd have to have a pretty big interest and passion for the game. Who are your leading offensive players? Uh, Tyler Westrick is leading us in scoring right now and, and Noah Johnson is slightly behind him. What about your defense players? Uh, you know, we have, a, we have a lot of good defensive players. Tyler Hamill's a very good defensive player for us. Um, he's leading us in steals and block shots. Um, and, and Noah and, and Tyler are very good defensive players as well. Now, I don't know much about basketball, so what are block shots? That would be anytime someone is uh, attempting a shot and you're able to tip it or uh, stop the shot attempt from, from reaching the, the basket. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, what would be your biggest challenge going into tonight's game? I think uh, taking care of the basketball, playing smart, not turning the ball over, um, and, and being patient and sticking with our game plan. How do you think it'll go? Hopefully well. I guess we'll find out in a couple hours for sure. What's your strategy? Uh, you know, we're going to try and play our pace. We're going to try and slow it down a little bit. They have uh, two very good offensive players. They have a very good team, but two offensive players um, – in, uh, in Boos and Bakken that we're going to have to try and slow down. How is this year's team different from previous years? Uh, well, last year we were very senior heavy. We had eight seniors, um, and a lot of those were returning starters. This year we're a very young team. Um, we have a couple sophomores up and only five seniors on the team. Um, so we're a lot younger, a lot uh, less experienced. Are you more, well, are you more likely to put a person on the team that's been playing longer? Yeah, I mean, usually those... When you get to the varsity level, it's usually kids that have been playing their entire life. So, yeah. So, like, since little. Yeah, yep, yep, since they were, since they were little kids, yep. Yeah. 
So as lo- as you're being a coach, have you ever won any trophies? Uh, we haven't we haven't won any championships yet. Last year we won our first uh, regional game, regional playoff game since I've been the coach. But otherwise, our last school conference championship was back in 2006 before I started coaching. How do you get into regionals? Um, actually, in uh, with basketball format, all teams um, automatically get a at least one regional game uh, to start the postseason play. So it goes regionals, then sectionals, and then state. So there are, there are multiple levels at each one, so you have to win a couple different games. Okay, so after, so to get into sectionals, you have to win some in regionals. Correct, yep, yep. Okay, and then the championship game is like a big deal. Though. Yeah, absolutely, yep, up at the Cole Center. Obviously, everyone's goal is, is to reach that, um, whatever division you play in, yep. Have you ever reached it? No, no, I have not, unfortunately, not yet. Uh, have you ever reached it when you were playing basketball nope, yourself? No, nope, we didn't. We didn't get there either. Oh. unfortunately. <laughs> okay, so thank you for being here with me today. I really enjoyed talking to you. It was my pleasure. Thank you very much. No problem. You're listening to the Team Day Sports Special: Ford Atkinson versus Milton Boys Varsity Basketball, presented by 91.7 The Edge, Daily Union, and Wisconsin Broadcasters Association. How long has it been since you felt the rush of stretching your arm across the foul line, releasing a 10-pound ball, anxiously watching it roll down the alley, anticipating a strike, only to see it bounce into the gutter? Quarter Mania at Rock River Lanes in Fort Atkinson can help relive those memories and create new ones. They also have banquet services and kingpin adventure golf. Details and information are available by visiting rockriverlanes.com or calling 920-563-9511. That's rockriverlanes.com or 920-563-9511. Since 1988, Diversified Personnel Services has been connecting motivated people with top end players in Jefferson, Dodge, and Dane County, along with Lake Country and surrounding areas. And players who partner with DPS fund vital vocational programs for youth and adults with disabilities and other barriers to employment. More information about DPS is available by contacting Ann Dancourt at 920-563-2437 or visiting dpsworks.com. That's 920-563-2437 or dpsworks.com. UW-Whitewater's campus radio station, 91.7 The Edge, is hosting the 91.7 The Edge Team Day Broadcasting Program this fall. The program gives 12 teams the opportunity to try out broadcasting before college. Support our efforts by keeping up on upcoming broadcasts at dailyunion.com and listening to the broadcast online at 917theedge.com. Thank you. With four seconds left to go in regulation play, Blackhawks down by three. They bring the ball down court, three, two, one, they shoot. The buzzer sounds. The crowd is screaming. Oh, the ball comes up short. Red Hawks win. That is how the series ended last year. Though the Blackhawks suffered a defeat, they still finished their season with 16 wins, nine in the Badger South Conference. The Red Hawks finished their season with 12 wins, five in the Badger South. Both teams split their series two and two. Three of them came down to the buzzer. This year is a new season, new game, and new battle. The Blackhawks split their record at home. The Red Hawks have a better record playing on their opponent's court. The Blackhawks averaged 52 points a game, the Red Hawks 56. The Blackhawks had a six-game winning streak last year, while the Red Hawks could only manage five. This could very well be another game decided at the buzzer. Coming up, it's the Port Atkinson Blackhawks versus Milton Red Hawks Boys Varsity Basketball. You're listening to the Teen Day Sports Special presented by 91.7 The Edge, Daily Union, and Wisconsin Broadcasters Association. Looks like a big crowd for Fort Atkinson today and a small crowd for Milton. Teams are getting ready with number number 24 show... Scheinhurt and number 32, Hamill. And it's Fort's ball. Parker has the ball, passes the bows. Out, Bows has it, passes all the way over to Strasburg. Strasburg to Bakken. Back to Strasburg, to Bose. 
Back to Bakken. To Strasburg, but no, it goes out of bounds. Milton ball. Hamill will take it in and passes to Spry. Spry passes to Hartman. Back to Spry. Back to Hartman. Back to Spry. Hartman. Spry. Back to Hartman. To Hamill. To jo Johnson. Spry has the ball. Back to Hartman. Back to Spry. Hamill has the ball. Back to Hartman. Spry has the ball. He shoots. No good. Spry gets it. Two points are on Spry. Good shot by Bakken. And nope. And it's Black Fort's ball. And Bowles shall take it in. Bose fires it out to number 24, Shiner. And looks like a foul against number 22. No, it's against Milton. Number 22. So against Hartman. And Fort's ball. Bakken shall take it in. He passes to Shiner. Two points for Shiner. Shiner. Hartman has the ball. Stolen by Bose. To number 33, but no for a fail. Looks like Fort's ball. And a couple of little kids pass it in. Okay, Bose shall pass in. Chooses to pass to number 33, Strasburg. And fired up by Bakken. Taken up by number 21, Spry. Shot up by, by number 12, Westrick. And looks like a foul against Fort. Also by number 33, Number... Strasburg received a foul. It's Milton's ball. Spry has it. He fires off to number 32. Hamill. Back to Hartman. Back to Spry. Stolen by Rocket. Rocket takes it up. Card by two. Shut up. No good. Stolen by Hartman. He takes. Number 12 takes it down. Westrick scores. Two points for Milton. Bowes takes it up. To number 13, Dahl. Held by number 24, Shine Her. But no good. Taken by Spry. Spry takes it up. Fires it over to number 40. Johnson hits, scores. Two points. That's six to Melton and two to Fort. And Blackhawks shall call a timeout. All right, good evening, everybody. My name is Kyle Johns, and I'm here. With and the Blackhawks cheerleaders are trying good to get all the people from Fort to go crazy. <laughs> and it sure looks are. like only the teens from Fort High School have actually started going along with it. <laughs> and it's four minutes and 42 seconds left on the clock for the first period. All right, looks like both teams have one foul. Uh, Milton was six and Fort with two points. Looks like it is Blackhawks ball. Bose has it. Traveling up. 
Fires over to Bakken. Bakken back to Shiner. Back to Bose. Takes it all the way around. Stolen by Milton. Shot up. No good. Number 40 has it. Out of bounds. Fort knocked it out. Number 10. Phillips has the ball. To Westrick. Back to Johnson. And it's Bowen up with the relay. Bose takes it up. Travels around. Fires it off to number 25. Jones. Right now it's Jones's ball. He throws it over to number 24. Sounds like a foul. Shiner came up with the pass up. Red Hawks number 10, Evan Phillips has a has fouled number 24. On the line shooting free throw is totally signed now. And no good. And it's Bose. Bose with the ball. Back to O'Brien. Back to Bose. He shoots, no good. Taken by Evan Phillips. And it is Spry down with the ball. To Bowen. Back to Spry. Back to Johnson. And stolen by Fort. Number 25 runs it up. It's Jones. And back to Spry. Oh, almost stolen from Spry. Uh, looks like an almost near trip, but it was a traveling violation. O'Brien shall start off with the ball. He'll be passing to number 25, Jones. Back to O'Brien. Passes to number 25. Number, number 12 has the ball and out on Milton. O'Brien has the ball. Passes to number 13, Dahl. He shoots! And that's six to eight. Four with six. And it is um, 13 with a possible three-point shot. Back, back to number 22, Rosing. And he shoots! But, and it is good. Eight to eight. Foul is on number 13, Bowen. And Fort's ball, number 22. Michael Rosing has the shot. Free throw. And it is good. That will make 9-8 to eight for Fort. Taken up by number 2, Johnson. Johnson with the ball. Turnover. Possession Blackhawk. Blackhawks. Number two, Michael Rosing will be passing to O'Brien. O'Brien. Oh, not on Fort. Out of bounds. And it's. It, number 32 is passed. Singing. Hamill will be passing to Johnson. And Bowen will be transferring out with number 21. Spry is taking the ball instead. And number 22 is possession. It is good for two points. Bakken is coming up with it. Back to Milton. Spry has it. Down to Hartman. Back to, back to number two, Johnson. Who shoots. Another two points. 12 to nine. And right now, Bose has it. He spins around. 
shoots it off to number 22. And foul against Milton, their third one today. Oh, nope. Second, my bad. Second one on Fort against number 13, Dahl. It is Milton's ball. Spry is taking it up. Passes it to Hamill. Back to Spry. Back to Hamill. And Fort number 33 has the ball. Bose has it. Back to 13. Dahl. Back to Bose. Who shoots it over to number 22. No. Go. And out. On. Oh, no. Close save by the Blackhawks. Back to number 33. And out on Milton. Blackhawks have possession of the ball. 46 seconds left in the first quarter. 9 to 12. Fort's ball. And number 33 has it. Shoots back to number 22. Number Bose shoots it up. It's 11 to 12 with 30 seconds and counting. Spry with the ball. Bowen with the ball. Westwick. Back to Bowen. Back to Spry. 20 seconds left. To number 40, Johnson. Back to number 32, Hamill. Back to Spry. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. No good. It, the score for the end of the first period is 11 Fort Atkinson, 12 Milton. Milton is up by one point. All right, it looks like uh, Fort Atkinson was really. Uh, being led by Milton there in the in the first half of that quarter, but they they really fought back and now it's 12-11 Milton. Uh, but it looks like Fort Atkinson really needs to step it up a little bit. Uh, looks like the the best scorer for Milton uh, right now is Devin Hartman. Uh, he is a six foot. Six foot two uh, senior from Milton, Bask from uh, Milton High School. We we'll take a little break here as we are in the middle of quarters, heading on to period two. The refs are giving the call. Oh, is number twelve? Ball. Westwick is coming up half court. Fires it over to Spry. Spry is with it. He sees. Back. Shout out to Johnson. To Hamill. Back to Johnson. Best. Back to Westwick. Oh. Westwick's ball. Back to Johnson. He shoots. Two points! Bose's ball. He shoots. Yes! That's 13 and 14. Westwick has the ball. Fires it up to Bowen. Bowen's with it. He's juggling it around. He lost the ball. Travel violation against Bowen, possession Blackhawks. Looks like O'Brien will be passing it. Oh. Bowes is going in and Bakken is to receive the ball. He's passed half court. Has it to number 22. O'Brien with the ball. Number 22 with the ball with a three-point shot. No good. 
Back to Spry. And Hartman with the ball. Foul by Ford Atkinson's by ba Ford Atkinson's Bakken. One point shot by number 13, Bowen. And it is no good. He has one more shot left in this. Still 13 and 14. Let's see if he can make this last shot. And he makes it. 13 to 15. Six, thir six minutes, 30 seconds left. Bakken has the ball. Fires it over to number 22, Rosing. To number 24, Shiner. Back to Bakken, who fires it up. And sounds like a foul. The shot was no good. Foul is against number 40, Noah Johnson on Milton team. Bakken has two free throws. First one is a success. 14 to 15, Red Hawks. Let's see what will happen today. This is his second shot today. Let's see what will happen. And it is good. 15 to 15. Spry has the ball. Fires it over to Johnson. Johnson chooses a fire back to Spry. Almost stolen. It has been stolen. Oh. Just going in an all-out brawl for that ball. Holding charge against number 21, James Spry. It is Fort's ball. Bose is back in the game. He fires it off to number 25. Jones. And it is shot up by number 25. Two points. And it is Spry's ball. Spry fires it off to Johnson. Johnson. Oh, Johnson's covered. Gotten by Westwick. And out of bounds. Out of bounds on Fort. Red Hawk ball. It'll be shot in by, thrown in by number 32, Hamill. Oh, no, no, no. Spry barely got the ball back. It was an overshot. Fires over to number 10. Barely covered. He shoots. No, go. Bakken with the ball going down. Fires it off to Bowes. Bowes gets uncovered. He shoots. No. And it's Spry's ball again. Picked up by the Red Hawks. And sounds like a foul. Bowes have fa has fouled the Red Hawks. Red Hawks ball. Number 10. Phillips shall be passing in. Pass to number two, Johnson. Johnson takes it around. Oh, off ahead of a teammate. Blackhawks ball. Number 25, Jones is passing into Bakken. Bakken walks down the court. Fires back to Jones. Then the number 24 with a two-point shot. Shiner gets the ball. Now is number 12, Westwick, taking up. Pass to Johnson. Pass to Noah Johnson. Back to Westwick. Who fires it back to Drew. Who shoots. And Noah point along with the whistle. Against number 
24, Shaner. Red Hawks get it. Number 10 has it. Phillips has the ball. Back to Evan. And we'll know it. And it's good. O'Brien with the ball. Number 33 with a desperate catch on a fumble. Number 13 shoots. Relay by number 25, Jones. And now, Westrick with the ball. Fires over to, to Phillips. Phillips to number 32, Hamill. Back to Drew Johnson. Now, fourth ball. Bo O'Brien has the ball. Back to number 13, Dahl. To number 25, Jones. To number 22 with a shot. No, go. 22 with two shots, both no good. And Westrick has the ball. Drew Johnson has the ball. And number 22, Rosling has the ball to O'Brien. O'Brien passes it to number 33. It sounds like a foul. Just for later, uh, coming up, we'll have Josh Smith from the Daily Union with the first half's highlights coming up during the halftime show here on Team Day Broadcasting on 91 of the Edge. Foul against number 40 from the Red Hawks. This will be their sixth foul today. With two minutes, 40 seconds left on the clock. They're switching out. The first free throw shot did not work for them. But number 33 has one more shot left, and he will be taking it. And number 33 is Strasburg. And it is good! 22 to 17. And Spry will re be receiving the ball this evening. And he passes the number, he passes to Hartman. Hartman to Drew. Drew to Hartman. No, Bowen. Back to Hartman. Back to Bowen. Back to Hartman. And blocked by number 13. Bowes up with the ball. He passes to number 25, Jones. And it's a shot by number 22. No good. Back with number two, Drew. Number 30 with the shot. It's no good. Back to Bowes. Bowes is dodging some really fast footwork by the Milton boys. Number 25, Jones. Jones with the ball. And recovered by Spry. Timeout called by the Milton. It looks like number 22 caught it with his foot and it just shot up into Sec his hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing play by Spry. For a minute there, it was just rolling on the floor. And uh, number 22 looks like... Uh, Hartman uh, caught it with his foot and it just shot up into his hands. Kind of an amazing play here at Fort Atkinson High School. Yes, and the score happens to be 22 for Fort and 17 for Milton. So Fort is finally ahead here nearing the halftime show, which uh, indeed we will have Josh Smith from the Daily Union with halftime reports. And also there are six fouls for Milton, five for... Fort and possession Red Hawks taken up by Spry. Pass to him by Hartman. Back to Hartman. Back to Spry. 
And is Westrick. Possession Westrick. Back to Spry. Bowen. Back to Hartman. Back to number 30. Webberl. Back to Bowen. And possession is number 21, Spry. 50 seconds left on the clock. Bowen has ball. Hartman, Spry. 40 seconds left on the clock. Is Hartman's ball. He runs for it. Shot to number 30. Barely saved. Oh, it sounds like a foul with 30 seconds left. Blackhawks. Looks like we're at 32.3 seconds left with Mil with uh, Ford Atkinson ahead, 22-17. And the possession will go to Bose. Bose takes it slowly, takes it up. He could have been mistaken for a turtle there. <laughs> Number 25, Jones has it. Back to Bakken. Looks like it's going to go to the basket, but no. And sounds like a foul against Milton. Ha Tyler Hamill will take what we has fouled Bakken. Bakken shall take two with. Literally five seconds left on the clock. First shot is good. 23-17. And here goes a second shot. And it is good. 24 to 17, 4 seconds, 3, 2, 1, Spry shoots, it is good! <laughs> Half court shot! 24 to 20! <laughs> Half time is starting. All right, next up we have Josh Smith from Daily Union who's going to give us our first half's highlights right here on 91.7 The Edge, WSUW, Whitewater. You're listening to the Team Day Sports Special, Ward Atkinson versus Milton Boys Varsity Basketball presented by 91.7 The Edge, Daily Union, and Wisconsin Broadcasters Association. Two Rivers Bicycle and Outdoor sells popular bike brands, repairs all makes and models, and provides bicycle, paddle, and snow sport rentals. They offer indoor cycling classes led by certified instructors to stay fit during fall, winter, and early spring months. Located along the bike path at 102 West Sherman Avenue in Fort Atkinson. For details, please visit tworiversbicycle.com or call 920-563-2222. Again, that's 920-563-2222. Since 1973, the Fort Atkinson Community Foundation has made grants of over $13 million for educational, cultural, and charitable purposes for the Fort Atkinson area. Recipients use them to enhance the quality of life. The foundation also has a wide variety of scholarships available to Fort Atkinson area residents and Fort Atkinson high school graduates. During the last three fiscal years, the foundation has more grants than have averaged more than $1.2 million per year. In the past year alone, nearly $230,000 in scholarships were awarded to high school graduates and continuing education students. Various citizens have volunteered their time to write a column for the local newspaper, the Daily Jefferson County Union. Fort Foundation Focus explains certain aspects of the foundation and discuss some of the projects that it funds. Details on how to donate or apply for a grant are available in at the fortfoundation.org or by calling 
920-563-3210. That's fortfoundation.org or 920-563-3210. UW-Whitewater's campus radio station, 91.7 The Edge, is hosting the 91.7 The Edge Team Day Broadcasting Program this fall. The program gives 12 teams the opportunity to try out broadcasting before college. Support our efforts by keeping up on upcoming broadcasts at dailyunion.com and listening to the broadcast online at 917theedge.com. Thank you. Team Day Transportation Services provided by Havelsboro Ford of Fort Atkinson. For information about their transportation services, visit HavelsboroFord.com or call 920-563-4444. What's up, guys? This is Logan Hendricks from Searching for Seas, and you're listening to 91.7 FM WSUW Whitewater. Now back to the Team Day Sports Special. Fort Atkinson versus Milton Boys Varsity Basketball presented by 91.7 The Edge, Daily Union, and Wisconsin Broadcasters Association. I'm here with Josh Smith of the Sports Daily Union team. <laughs> uh, how do you think the game's going so far? Well, first off, Amanda, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. I think it's really neat what you guys are doing here. So uh, welcome to Fort Atkinson, and uh, you. hope you're enjoying the game so far. Uh, to answer your question, you know, it's, it's been a, a pretty high-intensity first half. Both teams running the court very well. Uh, really the big issue right now is Milton kind of went cold uh, shooting from the floor. Fort went on a 13-3 to run in that second quarter, and that's the big reason that they have a four-point lead at halftime, 24-20. to Who do you think has the most advantage in this game? Well, I'll tell you what's impressed me so far is the uh, the Blackhawks' ability to stop Tyler Westrick of Milton. Uh, mm-hmm. he's, a, he's a high-scoring guard. He puts in double-digit points most games. And with the help of Danny Jones and Casey O'Brien, Ford Atkinson's held him to just two points in the first half. So I really think, despite the Ford's offensive ability, it's what they've done on defense that's really been the difference at this point. Have you watched... Uh, so last year when Fort and Milton played each other, were you at that game? Yes, I was. Uh, how does it compare to this one so far? Well, in that game it was pretty close as well. Um, and what ended up being the difference was Tanner Bowes took over the game and he ended up scoring 30 points in an overtime oh. victory. Uh, tonight, uh, Tanner just four points, but you could see he was starting to get a little bit more confident with his shot. He came down the court in the second half and popped up for a really long two. They said his toe was on the three-point line, mm-hmm. so only went down for two points. But I would watch him in the second half if the Blackhawks want to make a move on offense. Now, in the last like two seconds of the game, a player made that three-point shot at the buzzer. How That was pretty impressive and intense. So. Yeah, that was, that was James Spry who made that bucket, and, and it was a big one because that actually snapped Ford Atkinson's 13-3 run. Uh, that was their first point since about four minutes left in the second quarter, so they went nearly half of that second quarter without scoring a point, and uh, that might be the sort of thing that keeps Milton in this game. A lot of times a four-point deficit at halftime doesn't look nearly as daunting as a seven point. So from your perspective, who do you think will win this game? Well, I liked Fort coming into this game. I was able to watch both teams compete at the Fort Healthcare Thanksgiving mm-hmm. tournament here. Uh, I shouldn't say tournament. Uh, it wasn't a bracketed tournament, but it was an opportunity for several teams to come to town here and play. And I saw Milton play Jefferson and lose, and I saw Fort uh, beat Jefferson uh, last week. So based on common opponents and what I've seen so far, I think Fort's the favorite to hold on to this lead. You said Jefferson. I'm just going to have to put in a little comment there that I go to Jefferson, so that's pretty awesome that we Absolutely. won. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... What do you think of the Fort Atkinson team this year? Well, Fort Atkinson's going to be pretty tough to beat. uh, They're pretty deep at the guard position, and they're going to rely on that. Now, the big key for them will be if they can get an inside presence uh, uh, down on the block. And so far tonight, they're getting that with Danny Jones has four points, Brady Shaner has six, and Andrew Dahl has two. If those big guys can contribute on a regular basis, Fort Atkinson's going to be tough to beat. And what about your opinions on Milton? Uh, Milton is kind of in the same boat. They got a lot of a lot of talent at the guard position, but not a lot of depth when it comes to their post players and their big men. But you know, so far tonight, though, I thought Noah Johnson's done a nice job. He's six foot four, and he scored uh, six points. He's actually the halftime leader for Milton right now. 
Um, they're going to need him to kind of do the same things. Um, Tyler Westrick's going to score points for Milton. They just need to find a second player to step up and provide a little extra offense. So how does Milton's team compare from last year to this year? Um, they're pretty similar. They lost a couple of guys to graduation, but Tyler Westrick um, was starting for them as a freshman and was scoring a lot of points then. So you're going to get a lot of the same looks from them. It's just a matter of them having a little bit less depth than they did a year ago. And the same question goes for Fort. Fort Atkinson only graduated two players off their team last year. Those guys were both uh, um, you know, regular contributors, but... Mm-hmm. The majority of Fort Atkinson's offense returned this year, and that's a big reason why they're the preseason pick to win the Southern Badger mm-hmm. Conference and possibly a sectional title and a berth to the state tournament. So, uh, I lost it. So, um, uh, oh, how has graduation affected the teams? Um, Well, Fort Atkinson, like I said, hasn't been affected too badly. They lost one starter in terms of graduation, but they've had about three guys fill in for him, and that that was Jimmy Hansen. He was a 6'3", 6'4", post player, and they're getting some contributions from new players this year. So I don't think graduation is going to hurt Fort Atkinson too much this year. Milton is kind of in the same boat, but we'll see what happens for them. All right, thank you for being here with me today, and after... After this, we're going into the third quarter <laughs> in the Fort Atkinson versus Milton game. All right, looks like we're heading into the third quarter here at the Fort Atkinson High School versus Milton High School boys basketball game here in Fort Atkinson. Right now, 24-20 uh, with Fort Atkinson on top. We're starting the game with number three rolling down the court, number three of Fort Atkinson. Ah, number four, 24, d- Mr. Shane Hare decides to put one up and misses. Number five shoots from the three-point line. Harker gets three points. Heading over to the other side, we got Milton trying to shoot, and they miss. Going on to Fort Atkinson, number three. Bose has it again. Hands it off to 24, Shane Hare. He shoots, and he misses. Turn over to Milton, who brings it down the court. Number 12 has it, and he shoots for two points. Currently 27-20, Fort Atkinson. Okay, that was actually a foul. On foul on Shane Her. Foul on Shane Her, and we're back. Okay, I'm back. Okay. And looks like number 12, Westrick. And it looks like no good. It'll be Bose's ball. Fires it over to number 22, Rosing. Now, now, um, Bakken has it. Fight over with Bose and two boys from Milton. Red Hawks foul, number 12. Now from Bose to Bakken. Bakken fires it off to number 33, Jordan. Jordan barely saves the ball and foul. 33 on the ground, getting brought back up by the Milton team. Blackhawks ball. Bose has it. He bat, he passes over to Strasburg. Strasburg has it. Has a point. Spry. Spry to Hartman. Hartman to Spry. Now it's Spry. Both steals. Both takes it up. 
covered by number 32, Hamill. Back to Bakken. Bakken to... Bakken a foul. Foul against... Bakken, foul. Number 22, she'll take it in. And Spry has it. He's just past half. Passes to Hartman. Hartman takes it around, pushing past two defenders. And shot by Wartrick. And it's Bo's ball. And shot by number 22, two Rossi. And Spry has it. Passes to number 32, Hamill. Passes to Hartman. Hartman with the pass back to Spray with a three point shot. No good. Caught by O'Brien. And out of bounds on Red, Red Hawks. All right, we're 31-22 Fort Atkinson Look, right now here in the third quarter. Looks like it'll be brought in by Spry. He fires it off to Warwick. And it's a fire over Warwick's ball. Two points. Two points, Milton. And O'Brien. O'Brien to number 13. Dull. Dull. Three points. Two points, Fort Atkinson. And now, now number two, Drew... Johnson, back to number, no, back to Noah Johnson, back to Spry. Then back to Noah Johnson. No, with the shot, is not good. Noah recovers, shoots, two points. Two points, Milton. We're in the and score. now number 22, Rosing has the ball. We're at 33-26, Fort Atkinson right now. And Bose has the ball. Barely tipped into the hands of Dahl. Back to number 33, Strasburg. Back to Bose. Back to O'Brien. And Dahl has it. Two points for Fort Atkinson bringing it to 35-26. At Spry four. comes up with it up the court. Back to Drew Johnson. Then to number 30, Whipple. And number 12, shot up, recovered by O'Brien. 35-28 at 3.38 here. Noah Johnson has gotten a foul. Number 13, Dahl is shooting. He's shooting two free throws. Not good on the first one. Switching out number 40 and number 21 with 10 and 13. Number two is coming in. Four coming back out. Looks like Bose has gone out. Here's the shot. And it's good. 36 to 28 with three minutes left. With Waltrick, Westrick with the ball. Fires it off to number 13. No, good. Number 30 with the ball. Number 10 with the ball. He shoots. Number 10, Evan Phillips gets it. Then number 25, Jones. To O'Brien. O'Brien to Strom. Blackhawk ball. Number 15, Bakken has just re-entered the game. And number 25 passes in to number 24, and it has been called a foul. Against the Red Hawks, number 30, Weber Paul has gotten the foul. Number 24, 
Shiner is shooting. And does not make it. They're switching out number 25. Well, Moon 25 outwards. Fires and it is good. 37 to 30. Four up by seven. Being led up by Westrick. Fired to Drew Johnson. Fired off back to Westrick. Who powers through. And has been called a foul. Against Fort. Bakken has fouled against number 12, Westrick. He shall take two baskets for that foul. And he's got, he's got it. 31-37. Casey O'Brien and Bose is coming in. Number two and number five are leaving. And he fires again, and it is good. 32 to 37. Led up by Bose. Brought in by Shine. By Jones. Shot up by Sh Bo By Jones. Led up by Westrick. Shot, and it's no good. Grabbed by Shiner. Taken up by number. 13 to 25. Back to O'Brien. To number 24. To Bose. Over to O'Brien. Over to number 13. Over to number 24. He shoots. No good. Grabbed by Bose. Number 25 has it. He's moving. He's moving. Number 13 has it. Bose. No. No, number 13 stole it. Westrick with it. Drew Johnson with a shot. No good. Relay by Bronze. Bowen. And over. Plus a foul. The foul is against Red Hawks. Phillips fouled. Dahl is shooting in. He fires it off. No good. Too short. Currently 39-34 at 142 here in the third quarter at the Fort Atkins versus Milton High School basketball game. Number 13, Dahl makes one more free point. And misses. Is the number 32 back to Spry? Back to Drew Johnson. Barely caught. Back to Spry. Being covered. Back to Drew Johnson. Co being covered by number 13. Number 32 by. And number 10. Number 21. And number 22 with a three point shot, but no good. Another foul has been called. Oh, out of bounds by Red Hawks. Oh. By uh, Tyler Hamill is fouled. It shall be O'Brien passing in to Bowes. Bakken is coming in for number 24. Shiner, he's taken bench. And here comes Bose coming up the middle. Over to O'Brien. Back to Bose. Neither one's moving much. O'Brien has it. He's moving. And number 22, Rosing, has it. Passes to number 33, Strasburg. Back to Bose. Bose covered heavily. And it's a personal foul. Charging against number 22. Thank you. 
And Bakken's going back out. And in with it is number 22, Hartman, with a score of 39 to 34 with 40 seconds left on the clock. Spry in with it. Back to number 32, Hamill. Back to Spry. Back to Drew. Back to Westrick. Back to Drew. Oh, okay. Back to Hamill. Back to Spry. 12 seconds left. Back to Drew. Back to Westrick. Three, two, one. Shoots. It's no good. All right, that would be the end of the third period, heading into the fourth period here at the Fort Atkinson versus Milton High School boys basketball game here in the Fort Atkinson High School. You're listening to the Team Day Sports Special, Fort Atkinson versus Milton Boys Varsity Basketball, presented by 91.7 The Edge, Daily Union, and Wisconsin Broadcasters Association. How long has it been since you felt the rush of stretching your arm across the foul line, releasing a 10-pound ball, anxiously watching it roll down the alley, anticipating a strike, only to see it bounce into the gutter? Quarter Mania at Rock River Lanes in Fort Atkinson can help relive those memories and create new ones. They also have banquet services and kingpin and venture golf. Details and information are available by visiting rockriverlanes.com or calling 920-563-9511. That's rockriverlanes.com or 920-563-9511. Since 1988, Diversified Personnel Services has been connecting motivated people with Toppin players in Jefferson, Dodge, and Dane County, along with Lake Country and surrounding areas. And players who partner with DPS fund vital vocational programs for youth and adults with disabilities and other barriers to employment. More information about DPS is available by contacting Ann Jancourt at 920-563-2437 or visiting dpsworks.com. That's 920-563-2437 or dpsworks.com. UW-Whitewater's campus radio station, 91.7 The Edge, is hosting the 91.7 The Edge Teen Day Broadcasting Program this fall. The program gives 12 teens the opportunity to try out broadcasting before college. Support our efforts by keeping up on upcoming broadcasts at dailyunion.com and listening to the broadcast online at 917theedge.com. Thank you. Now back to the Teen Day Sports Special. Fort Atkinson versus Milton Boys Varsity Basketball presented by 91.7 The Edge, Daily Union, and Wisconsin Broadcasters Association. All right, looks like we've had a, a pretty good game here so far. Uh, Milton beginning with a, a strong lead in the first quarter, but losing it in the second and the third, and it currently looks like Fort Atkinson is ahead. 39 to 34. We have a lot of great scorers here in this game. We have Spry making a lot of the three pointers for Milton. And we have a lot of uh, great shots by Bose there on the Fort Agatson basketball side. So you're listening to the Teen Day. Fort Atkinson versus Milton Boys Basketball Broadcast right here on 91.7 The Edge. And we're heading into the fourth period. We're going to go right back to Orion. Orion? So far, it's been a good game. Milton has been fouling more than fourth, though. Red Hawks will be passing in. All the way back to number 40. Johnson. Westrick with the ball. Back to Drew. No Johnson. Back to Westrick. The three-point shot is good. It's 37 to 39. Fourth ball. O'Brien with it. To number 22, Rosing. It's in the center of all the turmoil. Spry with it. Spry with it 
to Hartman. It's all the way over to Westrick, who shoots. And it is recovered by Ford Atkinson. Very, oh, out of bounds. Red Hawks ball. Bows and Bakken are back in the game. And out go 25 and 22. And oh, almost. Back to Bo Bakken, then Bows. Then O'Brien, then number 33 up with it, and it is good! Strasburg had the points. Now back to Spry. Then to Noah. He shoots just short. Recovered by O'Brien. It's a, it's a jump ball between number four and number 21. A few flames flying about that whole situation. Red Hawks receive a foul, number 32, Hamill. A little controversy over that play. Over that. Black Hawk ball, shot in by O'Brien. Two bows. Bows takes it up. Fires back to O'Brien, who barely saves it. Sends it to Bose. Bose to Bakken. Bakken back to Bose. Bose over. It is stolen by Milton. Brought up by Spry, their most forward person. The shot by number 32. Barely saved by O'Brien. Sent back to Bakken. Bakken comes with, up with it. Sends it back to O'Brien. Sends it to number 33. Sends it to number 24, shot. And there's been a foul over and out of bounds. Holding. Number 12, Restrick has gotten another foul. Here we go with our first free throw. It is no good. And... <laughs> Held up back by Spry. Spry tries to fight around O'Brien, but he's too quick. Sent, brought up by, by Bakken. Bakken. Bakken to Bose. Bose to O'Brien. O'Brien to number 33. Back to Bakken. And it's been a trip and a foul. Another controversial foul. That's the Red Hawks' eighth foul, so they must be starting to get desperate. It's 37 to 41. 41 37 for Atkinson with five minutes, 50 seconds left. Bakken takes the free throws. Fires it off. It is good. 42 to 37. And Bakken's second throw. <laughs> he fires it off, and it bounces off. Taken back by Spry. Back to Drew Johnson. To number 30, off the backboard. Number 33 head, but then the whistle is blown. Timeout by Red Hawks. Oh, foul on Blackhawks. Red Hawks ball, number 30. Bakken is foul number 30. Weber Paul is shooting. And the first one is good. 38 to 42. Red Hawks. And number Weber. Westrick is being traded in by number. Moved around by with number 13. And it's number 33 ball. Jordan comes up with it. Now it's O'Brien's ball. Back to Bose. Bose fires wide open. It is no good. Caught by Noah Johnson. 
And it back to Westrick, who takes it up. Fires it off. And no good. Caught by number 13. Drew Johnson with it. And back to number 13. But then Drew. Two points for Drew Johnson. 42 to 40. Fort winning. O'Brien ball. Number 33 ball. Back to O'Brien. Back to number 24. Back to number 22. Who fires it off by his snag that made there by Drew Johnson. And foul on Blackhawks. That's their sixth foul. Our first three free throw right now by Milton. Drew Johnson will take it. He fires it off. And it's good. 41 42. Two players are going in for number 24 and number 4. And Drew Johnson's second free throw. He shall fire. And no good. Saved by number 22. Now Bose will take it up. Fires it to number 25. Who takes it all the way around out by Fort. I mean, not Fort, Milton. Blackhawk ball. Bowles looks like he's going to go out to take, to pass it in. Fires it all the way down. To number 22, Michael Rosing. Bose barely saved. Yes, two points by no Strasburg. Sprite, no wet streak with it. Fires it off. No good. Save by number 30, Brian. <laughs> Drew Johnson with the two points. They're down by one point with four minutes left in the fourth quarter. Red Hawk ball. Tyler Hamill will be coming in. No, 40, Tyler Hamill. 44-43 at Fort Atkinson. They're here at 350 in the fourth quarter. All right, and Milton comes up, passes it. It is to Phillips. Phillips to Westrick. Westrick to number 32, Hamill. And it's Red Hawks ball. Blackhawks ball. Number 25 will be taking it in. Danny Jones to Bowes. Bowes walks it up. Bose squeezes past Westrick. Fires it to Dan Jones. Jones bounces off. Red Hawk ball. Black Hawk ball. And that... Was another violation against Hamill with another foul. Dahl will be shooting two. He fires. And it's no good. Here comes the second shot. He receives the ball from the ref. And it is good! 
45 to 43, the two points ahead. And Westrick up with it with the ball. Back to Drew Johnson. Timeout. And we are here 45-43 here in the fourth quarter. Two minutes and 57 seconds left on the clock. After the game, make sure to stick around for the post-game show with Ford Atkinson coach Mike Hintz here at the Ford Atkinson High School with Ford Atkinson versus Milton Boys Basketball. Fort was the timeout was called by Red Hawks. All right, looks like we're heading right back into this game. We'll see what uh, Milton can do. They're only two points behind here with two minutes and 57 seconds left on the clock for the fourth period. It will be Red Hawks ball. Back to Westwick. Westrick. And then Bowen. Bowen takes it out. Back to Westrick, who has the highest three-point shooting average of the whole team. Then he travels in, shoots it off to Bowen. Bowen to Drew Johnson. Johnson covered. Back to Bowen. Bowen covered. Fires it to Westrick. Westrick covered by two, but holding. Rosing, number 22, Rosing, foul number 12, Westrick. And it is Fort, Fort Ball off the rebound. Bowes with it. Bowes with it to number 22. 22 to 25. Snatched by number two, but saved by Bose. And there has been a timeout by Fort. All right. A full timeout by Blackhawks. 45 43 for Atkinson. One minute 53 seconds left on the clock for the fourth period here at Fort Atkinson High School. Fort Atkinson versus Milton. Boys basketball here at Fort Atkinson. So it, it looks like we've had a pretty good game here so far. They're pretty much neck and neck with Fort Atkinson just leading by two points. Uh, make sure to stick around for the post-game show with Fort Atkinson coach Mike Hintz. He'll be talking to us about uh, some game analysis and what happened out there. And it looks like it will be Blackhawks ball with Bose going out to, to take it. And he will be passing to number 22, Michael Rosing. Back to Bakken. Back to Bose. Bose takes it out. Over to Rosing with a three-point shot, but no good, but out by Red, Red Hawks. Possession, Blackhawks. Looks like Bowes will be going out, and O'Brien comes in. Over to Rosing. And Rosing with it. Back to Bowes. Bowes trapped by Spry. Back to Rosing. Rosing covered by Drew Johnson. Rosing. And it sounds like a holding. Holding against Red Hawks. Ooh, 10th team foul. That does not sound good. Number 12, Westrick. Bakken is shooting two free throws. Let's see if he can make these. Here's the first one. It is good. 
That makes Fort Atkinson three points ahead of Milton right here. One minute and 21 seconds left on the clock. They can make this shot. Then they are up by four against Milton. And here it goes. It is good. Fort Atkinson 47 to Milton 43. It will be Milton's ball with Spry as usual bringing it up the court. To Drew Johnson. Then to Noah Johnson. Then to number 32, the shot, but it goes over the back. Blackhawks, everybody going in. Bose, Bach and O'Brien all back out onto the court. Also with Rosing and number 13, Dahl. Is Bach and Ball covered by Westrick. Back to Rosing. 50 seconds left on the clock. Drew Johnson just shoved number four. Fort Atkinson with two free throws right here. Let's see if we can get two more points ahead for Fort Atkinson. And there it goes. 48 to... 48 to 43, Fort Atkinson. Number 33, 24. I have come back out. And it's another shot, but no good. Followed up by Spry. Spry shoots it over to Westrick. Westrick shoots it. It is no good. Cut by O'Brien. Covered by four. It's another foul against. Red Hawks, that's our 11th foul this game, which is quite amazing. 32 seconds left in this game. And O'Brien shooting two more free throws. This one is no good. Really comes down to these free throws now, uh, but Fort Atkinson seems to, be, seems to be getting them all. I agree right with you. 49-43, to 43, up by six. Bows, yeah, Spry with it out the court. 26 seconds left. Number 32 shoots it, no points. And Fort with it. Number 33 runs it all the way down. Two points with 15 seconds left. 51 43, Fort Atkinson. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Three, two, one sec, 1.2 seconds left, and out of bounds. I have to say, eight seconds. Oh, right. There's a, been an injury of rest, Westrick. Eight points down for Milton right now, Fort Atkinson ahead. He has to be helped out the court. Looks like a leg injury. Blackcock ball still. Looks like he's walking it off. And the game is over. 51-43, Fort Atkinson. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in to the Team Day broadcast for the uh, Fort Atkinson boys broadcast. Fort Atkinson versus Milton right here on 91.7 The Edge. And up next, we have the post-game show with Fort Atkinson coach Mike Hintz. He's going to tell us who the player of the game is. Say it. Keep it here. On 91.7 The Edge, WSUW Whitewater. And we're back with the Teen Day Sports Special post-game show from the Fort Atkinson High School. I'm here with Coach Hintz from the Fort Atkinson Boys Varsity team. How are you today? I'm, I'm a little better now. Thanks for having me. No problem. Uh, first, to start off, I'd like to congratulate you on your win. Thank you. Any, <laughs> any win's a good win. We'll take them wherever we can get them. Okay, so to start off, how do you feel the season is going so far? We're... we're uh... That's, that was our fourth win, so 4-0. Um, 
came in the season with a lot of expectations, and uh, I think our guys are responding to it well. It was good to have a game like tonight where we had to test uh, test a lot of things that we uh, we need to improve upon, and uh, we did not play our best, but we found a way to win, and that's that's the signs of good teams uh, becoming better. What would you say you need to improve upon? Well, tonight we need to rebound better. We need to take care of the basketball. Our shot selection's got to be a little better. Um, we got to stay composed and understand that it's a 32-minute game, and we will have a target on our back all year. So, uh, no team's going to take a night off with us against us. So, uh, we got to stay. Even keel. We have to make sure that we understand that it's 32 minutes and uh, composure is going to be the most important thing that we can bring to the table. What would you say um, was your toughest challenge tonight? Um, we battled the flu tonight. You know, we, we have a couple got one guy home, one guy got uh, an injury at 11th hour today, so we lost two of our rotation players. So that was a challenge coming in. Uh, during the game, our challenge was keeping them off the glass. Mm -hmm. uh, our outside shooting was not nearly what it's capable of being, and then we ch did not shoot very well from the free throw line. So you take those three things, normally that amounts to a really big loss. So we were fortunate that we got some contributions elsewhere to, to win the game. Um, who were your leading offensive players tonight? Uh, I, I think Andrew Dahl and uh, Brady Shanier along with uh, Alex Bakken, where our three leading scores. I don't have the stats in front of me. I apologize. Uh, it's okay. And who would you say your defensive player was? Well, our, Michael Rosie and Danny Jones did a heck of a job in Westrick. He's one of the best scorers in our conference, and to hold him 11 points is, is a very good accomplishment. Uh, who would you say the player of the game was? I think our whole team. I, I, I can't single out one guy. I really can't because it took all... Every guy that was suited up from the energy they provided on the bench to the guys that were on the court. So, uh, I honestly, if I had to pick, uh, you know, I would probably give it to Tanner, given the fact he's battling the flu and, and he led us down the stretch and took care of the ball for us. So, you consider tonight a big game? Oh, yeah. I mean, anytime you play uh, a rivalry game with Milton mm -hmm. and it's your opening conference and you're predicted to be the conference champ, you got to break that seal. So,. Um, it was it was very important to get this win. I'm very proud of the guys for what they battled through, and the best part is we have a lot of things we continue to work on. Being the big game as it was, how did you pump up your team for the game? I don't think in a rival you got to do much pumping up. Um, I, they know what's at stake. Um, I'm fortunate a lot of these guys have been with me for four years at the varsity level, so uh, they understand what's what's important this year. And they understand what's at what's at stake if they do not come pl ready to play. What do you look for in a varsity player? Uh, I need a kid. You know, we have six pillars in our program: servanthood. They got to be willing to be there for their teammates at all times. They got to be willing to recognize when they're down and pick them up. I don't want a player to. None of our players can fear failure. They have to understand that if they can have any success in life, that failure is part of it. And then if they learn from it, they become a better person. I believe they have to have moxie, gritness, toughness. they got to be willing to do the little things, play for the name on the front of their shirt versus the name on the back of the shirt. Um, i gotta, I got to have a player that understands the importance of us winning the paint, whether it's through rebounding, free throws, drives. And I have to have a person that understands that this is, in the meaning of life, this is just a game. And uh, um, I think I have 15 very good ones. Um. In tonight's game, bef this is like a before question, would you have rather have an unstoppable defense or an amazing offense? Our, our, our pride, our joy, our success will be on our defense. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Shifting to a more, uh, a more personal level, did you play basketball yourself? Yeah, I, I played high school basketball, college basketball. I was a decent high school player. I was not the greatest college player. <laughs> <laughs> what were your positions? I was a forward and a, and a guard in college. Well, what does a forward do? A forward, my, in high school, I played the paint, rebound, defend the taller players, um, um, try to score the short shots, set screens for the guards so they can get open. What made you want to become a coach? Uh, my high school coach uh, is the reason that I have any success in my life. I, uh, you, know, you hear the cliches, coaches change your lives. I, I, I had some growing up to do, and he was the person that taught me and made me realize how quickly I needed to grow up. And uh, he was—he's always been there for me. And 
he really inspired me to continue at the next level, and I was fortunate enough when I went to Stevens Point to work under Jack Bennett, who is, uh, is he's my second father. So I owe it to them. And uh, sometimes you're given something that's in life that you don't really you don't understand. Mm-hmm. Things, some things come easy, and working with kids and coaching comes easy to me. And I, I'm just honored that uh, this district allows me the opportunity to work with some great kids. Yeah. What advice would you give to an aspiring coach? Give it everything you got. It's a passionate game. Understand that it is a game, but work like, it, like it's the end of the world. But at the end of the day, um, follow your dreams. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't do it. Become a student of the game. Uh, make sure, regardless of what you do, whatever you're going to go into, Pick brains. Find out every little thing you can and then mold yourself from those tidbits. But don't lose who you are as a person. Keep your character. Keep your spirit. And uh, just do it. Make sure you're having fun. In your opinion, what makes a good coach? you got you got to understand that it's not about you. It's about mm-hmm. the community you work in, the school district you work for, and the players that put the jersey on for you. Um, you have to be willing to make hard decisions. you got to be willing to lose friends or people that you think are friends because of the decisions you make. But at the end of the day, it's about the kids that you work with and what they can learn and what can make them a better person in life. How does your team this year differ from last year? There's not much. I only lost two players. (laughs) Um, I really enjoy these guys. These are the reason I still coach. Um, We recently had a a third child, and I thought with the demands of three children that this was not going to be an opportunity I'd be able to continue because of the demands they have and this group has taught me that I can trust them with the little things that I used to get all upset about and stress out about um, uh, this is going to be a, when this year's over it's going to be a very tough ending uh, what was your strategy going into tonight's game uh, we we had to stop Westrick number 12 mm-hmm. we had to win the re, we had to win the paint and we had to play with composure with the understanding that uh uh, there is an X on our back, and people are going to be watching how we break teams down, mm-hmm. how we win games. Um, we just had to grit one out. Conference games are tough. You add in some sickness, it makes it a little harder. We just had to find a way to win. Uh, and did you accomplish that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm very proud of our guys. I'm very happy right now. And um, there was a point in the game where I was really impressed, and I'm not a big basketball person. <laughs> So it was when it was like the second quarter, and they made the three pointer, <laughs> and like the yeah. Yeah, unfortunately for us, that is the fourth time someone has done that this year. We had three of them going against a scrimmage on us, and then tonight. So uh, we we got to work on our half court defense a little better. Anytime we play in this conference, it's a challenge, and Milton provides a uh, a unique challenge because of the rivalry. We both came into this conference together from a different conference, so mm-hmm. they've been rivals and playing each other for conference championships for years, and uh, um, it's uh, it's unique in its own way, and it's very special to a lot of people in this area. So I think there's a lot of Fort Atkinson uh, alum that are very happy this evening. Um, thank you for your time. I really appreciate talking to you, and um, congratulations on your win again. Well, thanks for having me. Best of luck to you guys. Thank you. You've been listening to our Teen Day Sports Special, Fort Atkinson versus Milton Boys Varsity Basketball, presented by 91.7 The Ed, Daily Union, and Wisconsin Broadcasters Association. The WBA is proud to support the mission of the 91.7 The Edge Teen Day Broadcasting Program, a community educational program through WSUW-FM for teens interested in pursuing broadcast careers. We'd like to thank the Fort Atkinson High School, Milton High School, and Daily Union Sports Departments for their technical assistance and support. Rock River Lanes, Diversified Personnel Services, and Two Rivers Bicycle and Outdoors as the Teen Day Sponsorship Team. Visit 917theedge.com to find out how you can get a copy of today's program. This concludes the 2012 Teen Day Broadcasting Program. Be sure to check out our Facebook page. On behalf of the entire Teen Day Broadcast team, we thank you for listening and invite you to support us in 2013.